Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to animate a character's arms and legs using one path in a shape layer. It's a pretty good way to compress stuff, just the way this character here is compressing his spine. Here in After Effects, what we're going to do is first dive into what is this thing you saw in the intro, and then we'll get into how the arms and legs actually work, and then we'll make a thing for ourselves, and then we'll be done. So that's the order of things today. So if we crack open this thing, we can see that we've got shoulders, back, gut. These are all just shape layers, and all they're doing is changing their position and sometimes their scale. There's not much to them. Really, for this whole thing, there's only 15 layers. It's a small number of layers for all the wonderful things. That wonderful finger motion. Oh, that's great stuff. But we're interested in the arms and legs. So if we look at the leg here, you can see we'll just isolate it and oh, those legs are actually two legs because I'm using a repeater to repeat those legs. And uh, you can see, oh yeah, pretty sweet. But within the legs, there's a lot of stuff, but there's only one set of keyframes that control the whole thing. So we're gonna go through how we would make arms and legs with this, how much detail we can put on them. And now it's time to move on to phase two, like I promised, actually making something. So we're gonna crack open a new composition and, uh, you know, I've been working with square things, but we can use, you know, regular, regular framing of things. So that'll be great. And what I would like to do in here is activate a grid. So if I'm drawing in After Effects, I usually turn on a grid and everything we're going to do, you can draw it right in After Effects. Very simple, very fast. Make sure we are also snapping to that grid. It's great to look at. It's better to snap to it. So now we need to actually draw something. So I'm going to go over here and grab the old rectangle tool, I'm going to choose a fill color, and let's make that uh, kind of torso t-shirt looking thing out here. So I'm just going to draw a lovely little rectangle. That's a square because I was holding down shift. And I'm concerned that I didn't draw it sort of in the middle of the frame. So what you can do is you can just hit UU on any layer you've ever drawn to call up everything that's ever changed about it. And I'm just going to adjust its position to be dead center just for my own ease of use on this thing. And now I think we're ready to go. Its size is 160. Maybe let's size that up to be... Uh, like a two, an even 200. That'll work for me for brain math, I think. So yeah, we got this thing out here. This is gonna be our torso. So I'm gonna hit return and write torso out there. Awesome, we made a shape layer, it's a square. We're so good. The next thing I wanna do is maybe draw the hips of this person. Uh, we're doing this super simple, real low end stuff here. And I'm just gonna draw a circle, move that layer up to right here, put it below the torso, call this hips, and give it a fill color that is, I don't know, like a, like a dark red here. That should do it. Sweet, good to go, nice. Very harmful to my eyes. What we need now are the arms. And these arms we will make using the pen tool. You can just hit G to call that up. Uh, we're gonna use a, a nice orangey stroke. That's great. And uh, 40 pixels is perfectly good. I'm just gonna click out here and then click over here and look at that, you have made an arm. Now that doesn't look very arm-like to you. Well, well, who do you think you are? Anyway, we're gonna rename this layer arms. It's a good first step. Twirl down inside and have a look at its contents. So in here, we have a shape layer one. Inside the shape layer one, we have a path, a stroke, a fill. This is a group containing stuff. And I'm gonna rename it skin, because this is the group that's dealing with the person's skin. And inside that group, I'm gonna go into the stroke and not butt caps, but round caps, please. That's what I'm looking for, perfect. And I'm gonna twirl open the path. We're not gonna to touch it for now. Just set a keyframe for now and we'll come back to it later. But I'm gonna duplicate that group and I'm gonna call this sleeve because now we're gonna define the sleeve part of this person, which I will do by going into its stroke, choosing a totally different color and then adding a trim paths so that I can trim off a percentage of the path I'm not interested in seeing which is 25% maybe. And I'm gonna change the stroke to have butt caps. <laughs> but, and we'll change the width to be, no, not eight, eight, zero, 80. So now that's looking more sleeve-like 
I think, very sleeve-like, and the path, we need to change that too. Certainly it has the same path, but I don't wanna be setting keyframes individually for this thing. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, click on that path, which will let me enter an expression. The expression I will enter is not gonna involve typing. I'm gonna grab this thing here, which is a pick whip, which inserts a reference to a target. So I'm gonna say your target is this other path. So I could take this path here, I could go ahead to one second. I could uh, I could use the old convert vertex and make this thing, you know, like a curvy line. I could do that. I can do whatever I want. I'm the I'm the king of this castle. I can do all sorts of things out here. You, you wouldn't even believe. It would melt your mind. Things we could do out here. Now you see that other path has to follow this one because it is referencing it. And that's just, just how that goes. But one thing you'll notice is that this shoulder zone looks abysmal. So I'm gonna duplicate that sleeve to make sleeve two. And the stroke on this one is not butt caps, but round caps. And I set the trim path to be like 1%. And that's gonna fill in that shoulder zone. So if I call up the keyframes of this arm by hitting U, you can see that it goes from straight to floopy, it just floops down. I think it would make more sense if this point actually came in closer like this. How's that? Like that. That's cool, I guess. I might be mindful though of the points have these handles here and these handles are being animated as well. So you can see the difference and if you extend the handles at the beginning, what that does to the rest of the animation. So it's coming in, maybe it's punching someone, punch, punch. But at, you know, two seconds, I'm going to copy and paste and put the same keyframe there. So he's going from here to there to here. I'm gonna take those, I'm gonna hit F9 to ease them, which is wonderful. So now they're nice and easy. La la. And arms are great, but this person also needs legs. They need a head too, but that's, that's the thing for another time. So I'm gonna duplicate those arms, and instead of arms too, let's call it legs. Now go twirl into legs, twirl into the contents of those legs, twirl into the skin of those legs, twirl into the path, grab that path, remove these keyframes, because we don't need them. And I'm just gonna move that path down here and sort of attach it to where I think it should go on this creature. I hesitate to call them a person because they look very strange. And I'm just gonna set it like this. And maybe we'll start them off with a, a nice curved leg, kind of like it is. So what I might do is, since this is a leg and not an arm, I might alter this uh, significantly. So these sleeves, I'm just selecting them both. And then I go up to the stroke up here and I go like this, I make them red. Now he's got shorts. Sweet shorts. And maybe I should have done this before, but I'm gonna duplicate these. And rather than call them sleeves, I'm gonna call them socks. So this is gonna be socks one and socks two. And you know, the big thing that we're gonna change about those is their paths are gonna be inverted. So we just reverse the direction of the path. So they're down there, select both of those. And yeah, I should have duplicated something before I did something else, but whatever, don't, don't hold that against me. And I'm just gonna click the body there, sweet. And we're gonna bring the stroke size down, maybe like a 45 or something. So it's still kind of noticeable. And yeah, that's great. So while he's punch punching, um, his legs are gonna do something, I haven't decided yet, but we've got legs. Those legs have socks and shorts, <laughs> it's pretty adorable. I'm gonna duplicate the socks one more time though. I'm just gonna find which of the socks is my, uh, there we go. I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna call this one stripe. So if you wanna put stripes on your socks, as we did in the original example, I would uh, go to the stroke here, I would select that color, and then I would go into its trim paths, give it kind of a thin uh, trim, and then offset it to be higher up on the ankle, like right there, boom, just like that. And the same principle applies, that if this thing goes from a straight leg to a bent leg, all we have to do is go into the skin, twirl down, go into the path, set a keyframe here, and I think, how, does it, how do squats go, I guess? Uh, let's make, when the arm is out, his leg will be bent, and uh, 
his, her, I don't know. We don't really know the gender of this person. Otherwise, we will make them kind of straight-legged, I suppose. Kind of like this. Sure. And then they kind of scrunch up like that. Neat. So let's kind of play that back. Copy this. Paste it there. How are we looking? Yeah, maybe that's something. I don't know. But the next thing to do, I think, is to give this person uh, multiple arms and multiple legs. It is kind of weird that they don't have more of them. And what I did in the example was, for example, with the arms here, I can go in here and I can add a repeater to this. I'll go add repeater. And with this repeater, I can give this thing two copies because you have two arms, go down, transform repeater one, and rather than having each instance or each projection of this stuff, we'll take a minute here and talk about the repeater a bit. The repeater is below the skin, the sleeve, and sleeve two. That means the repeater is gonna be repeating, creating instances of all the stuff above it. So skin, sleeve, this, because the repeater is below it all, takes it all. And we're making two copies and putting them below each other. Change that, put them above each other, thanks. And I could repeat the just the sleeves, we can do that. Uh, but if you've got it under everything, it'll repeat everything above it. What it then does is it changes something about each subsequent uh, iteration. So it could be we want to change the position, we don't. So we'll put that to zero. We could change the scale, which I use when I change one to negative to make it flip and kind of flips it on its anchor point, which as you can see is right here. So all of this is flipped to over there. And what does that look like? Wee! Pretty cool. I think that's pretty good. Maybe this person's dancing. I don't totally know what's up, but I can just copy this repeater, command C, go down to the legs and control V, command, put it down there. And there we go, we got this, got this going on. You don't need to make the repeater flip stuff though. You could make it instead translate it. So don't do that, but do do the, that voodoo that you do. And maybe this looks correct, or so that they're doing this. Sweet. So the next thing to do is to put some motion to the arms and the legs and all this. I think the legs should be parented to the hips, the arms should be parented to the torso, the torso should be parented to the hips as well. And if we go here to the middle time, uh, this is sort of where the ground is. I'm call it my rulers, command R, put a ruler here just so I know, and hips, position change. With the straight legs, you're in the right position. With the bent legs, your new position should be down here, kind of like this, I think so. And then we copy paste that keyframe like this. And how does that look? Or we perfect. That's good, that's good. I'm just gonna shorten my uh, work area to be right there. So if we play this back, hoo, ha, hoo, neat. You can grab everything, hit U, call up all the keyframes, and then we can uh, go to the graph editor. All of them are eased, so grab all their handles and push them like this, and then hoo, ha, hoo, ha. There are a few things that you want to look out for. Sometimes if you shorten the path too much, then that little shoulder bubble that we made will stick out under the sleeve. You just have to be careful to sort of work around that by extending the sleeve or by not animating in ranges that are going to make that happen. Sometimes the connections look a little bit funny. Like, it is kind of funny to see that this person doesn't own a butt. What we'll probably want to do is give them one by simply drawing in a butt. And we can just then move that butt like this. Sweet, that's doing it. it looks a little bit more anatomically correct. They're also missing a head. I can't believe I missed that. You know, I think it really tells you what I think is important. And uh, we'll just go like this, make it a head, sweet. And make that head like that, awesome. And we put that on the torso layer so that it's in a good zone. And yeah, we've got this person just, I don't, I don't know what this exercise would be called, but it looks kind of funny. And 
they don't have shoes because I find drawing shoes to be incredibly difficult. But the point of this tutorial was to teach you how to animate arms and legs using a shape layer and just one set of keyframes. And I think we have accomplished that. So if you've had trouble with this, please let me know in the comments, ask questions. I'll try to get you through it as best I can. And if you really enjoy yourself on this channel, please subscribe to it. If motion graphics and after effects are things you want to learn, subscribe to this channel. New content going up all the time. And check out the back catalog of stuff. There's a lot of great things on here. This is tutorial 118. So there's at least something else good on this channel, I hope. Uh, if you have questions about After Effects or motion graphics in general, tweet at me at EC Abrams or get involved on the Facebook page. Send me comments and messages on there. And if you want to get your hands on the file that was used to make this thing you're watching now and the thing at the beginning, head on over to evanabrams.com. So links to that in the description or in the cards or something. And like I said before, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel and you won't miss any upcoming tutorials. And there will be a bunch. So thank you so much for watching. I've been Evan Abrams, and if you subscribe, we'll see you around the internet.